My name is Keita Mould and I look at archaeological leather coming up from excavations and I found that I was forever looking at a book by John Waterer called Leather and the Warrior and I flick through it on a regular basis trying to find out some of my little scraps and work out what they're from and I realised that it was written maybe two generations ago and I thought to myself well I know that we've made all sorts of interesting discoveries since then and it would be lovely to pull them all together and get them into a similar book that other people could flick through and use for the next generation and so I suggested it as a topic for one of our archaeological leather group conferences and we thought and the ideal venue for that sort of conference would obviously be the Royal Armouries in Leeds. Hello, I'm Tom Richardson, I'm Deputy Master of the Armouries and I gave a paper at the conference on leather plate armour, mostly in the 14th century, which was really interesting because it dovetailed with another paper on 14th century leather armour finds from the Low Countries. My name is Barbara Wills, I work at the British Museum and I'm a, a specialist conservator. I work in the conservation of organic materials. I spoke about a Romano-Egyptian uh, helmet and cuirass made of crocodile skin. But was it a military helmet and cuirass? Certainly it was made of crocodile skin. And it's in the collections of the British Museum. And I conserved it some years ago, indeed some decades ago. And, uh, but this um, conference was the perfect place to put the story of the helmet and cuirass before an audience who could understand it. And I asked some questions which I've received some really interesting answers. My name is Nicolas Batist and I am working uh, in Switzerland. I'm finishing a thesis, a PhD, at the University of Savoy. And actually I'm working as curator in Switzerland about arms and armor, but I'm specialized about uh, armor. I'll talk about a special leather component of medieval swords, um, call it with many names uh, like shapes uh, or uh, rain, rain guard or uh, also couplets and pieces. It's a little crescent uh, pieces on the guard and terribly unknown in fact. So I will try to explain some things about it. I'm Yvette Fletcher and I'm head of the Leather Conservation Centre which is based in Northampton and uh, I conserve historic objects made wholly or partly of leather and related materials, so any skin based uh, material. Today I've been talking about other uses for leather. Um, I realised that most people were talking about uh, defensive weapons and I thought well there was a lot of other uses of leather, it wasn't all about fighting. So um, I looked at um, uh, examples would be uh, football used in the First World War, uh, communion set, uh, army chaplain communion set, and also some uniforms from the ladies um, who worked in various male male roles during the First World War. My name is David Nicoll. I'm attached um, in an honorary capacity to Nottingham University. I was talking about some um, lamellar armour from the medieval period which was found in the citadel of Damascus and which I was studying before the current crisis blew up and which I hope one day I'll be able to go back and continue studying. Hello, I'm Dr. Makita Falcon from Lausanne, the Gentle Craft uh, Shoe Museum and Historical Works uh, Conservation. I presented the remains of a man who fell into a glacier and came out in 1984. His, the parts were collected, but like all things in archaeology, we just have little bits. So the leather survived very well. The conference was absolutely splendid, actually. It's been fabulous. It's been a real mixture of, of talks. Everybody's been really interesting. This has been one of the best conferences I've ever attended. We had so many subjects that bordered on the next subject, but only contributed, but didn't take anything away from it. The wonderful sequence of presentations that seemed to perfectly dovetail each with the other. So it was a, a very 
uh, very in-depth information and also very flowing information and it's, it was quite special. An amazing amount of people contributing and giving a positive energy for every single subject and opening new ideas, new horizons, new understandings and the, the all classic, oh, that! <laughs> The whole conference has had papers from all over Europe which have dovetailed together and told a really interesting story, uh, something which hasn't been put together as a study for nearly 40 years in a single place. And we're looking for forward very much to getting conference proceedings published afterwards so you can all read about the fascinating papers we've had at the conference.